ladies, Danielle here from A Woman of Virtue. Come with me today as we look at God's word for our marriage to usher in peace like we've never known before. Kingdom ways will yield kingdom results. Hi ladies, today I want to talk about whether you are desperate or not. And the reason I want to talk about this today is because last episode I talked about God's kingdom within marriage and it's it's quite out there. Um, It's biblical, it's in the Bible, but you know many Christian wives don't live that way anymore so it's kind of radical. Um, And so If you determine whether you're desperate or not, it will kind of determine whether you believe God's word. How desperate are we? Um, In case you haven't listened to that last episode, I just want to do a brief um, explanation of God's kingdom. And this is coming from my website, awomanofvirtue.com. And it's this message in a nutshell. You can um, go read it if you want. I'm just going to read it quick, quickly. God is a God of order, and his purpose is that his kingdom would be reflected within your marriage. The triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, mirrors a hierarchy in which the Son, Jesus, submits to his Father, and the Holy Spirit submits to Jesus. It is orderly, and it acts as a template for marriage. God's design for marriage was intended to be a reflection of his government. Woman was not created to rule over man. God created Adam to have dominion over all that was made, but for him there wasn't a helper suitable, which was the first of all God's creation that he found not good. He fashioned Eve from one of Adam's ribs and gave her to him as a helper. Creating your husband to have all dominion and authority in his home, it is you that he gave to your husband to help him. This is God's design for marriage. Typically, when fighting ensues in marriage, it is because God's hierarchy is out of kilter. Point blank, the fighting begins and endures because God did not create you and I to rule over our husbands. Your husband, created to have dominion and authority, will fight with you to win his God-given authority over you, whether he is saved or not, whether he knows it or not. And there's a little bit more in that, this message in a nutshell, there's a little bit more there. And then if you want to, you know, read even more, into it you can read understanding kingdom ways and that just goes a little deeper into that whole thing um you can read understanding kingdom ways but it's from it's straight from my book the quarreling wife you can find it on my website a woman of virtue.com so we need to know where we are before we can move forward in order for us to believe god's word and his kingdom and his ways we, we almost have to, like, ask ourselves how desperate are we? How bad do we want it? It is monumental that we answer this question because it will determine our stamina moving forward. This journey will not be easy, and you will be tempted to turn back. This is very countercultural, and it's, it's not accepted. Your friends will think you're crazy if you share with them, or even if they just look at look at your life and see what you're doing there they're, they're going to think you're nuts and i'm talking your christian friends it just this just isn't how women do it in marriage anymore before you say yes i'm desperate we need to define what desperation even is we need to determine what is lying directly beneath our desire for change in marriage this will require you to be real with yourself i I know that we, as Christians, oftentimes think we know the right answer, that that is not this. You need to be real here with yourself. No one needs to know this. I mean, you can share if you want with with your girlfriends or your mom or whatever, but you've got to be really honest with yourself here. Do we want change just so that our life can get better, or do we want change because if something doesn't change, our marriage is over? I mean, there's a huge difference. And so let me let me just give it to you straight here. Do we enjoy talking about our husbands to our friends, slipping digs at them, and, you know, just playing the victim? Or are we willing to acknowledge that the change we're seeking is going to start with us? 
it's it's hard to ask those questions and it's hard to give real answers, but that's where the change is going to come. Sadness in marriage is not an accurate indication of desperation. I can be sad and mopey, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm desperate. It could just mean that I'm trying to manipulate my husband. James 4, 2 through 3 really speaks to this issue and it's just really spoken to my heart over the years it says you desire but you do not have so you kill you covet but you cannot get what you want so you quarrel and fight you do not have because you do not ask god when you ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures so that's all about the heart it's why do we why are we asking god for things why do we cry out to him you know if that's about motives asking is not the problem we can ask god and we can beg and we can you know that's not the issue i mean a lot of us we can we can ask and ask and ask and we just get silence on the issue from god psalm 139 23 through 24 says search me god and know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That really needs to be the prayer in our heart. We need to get serious. I mean, do we do we want to know? <laughs> I mean, it, this is this is painful and it's going to hurt, but it's what needed to heal our marriages. Um we need to know where we're at before we can move forward. I mean, we can you can move forward, but if we don't deal with the stuff way in the beginning, I mean, it's it's kind of going to be a mess and it might all topple down if we don't do it right you know, and God will, God will reveal the truth of our, you know, the condition of our hearts. He will reveal it if we ask him. But a lot of times we just don't want to know. And, you know, we're naive to how we really are. We, we see ourselves one way. If God doesn't expose our hearts, we will never know what's in there. And that's why we need, we need Psalm 139. 23 through 24. That really needs to be the prayer in our heart because we don't just want any kind of change. We want God's change, you know, and a lot of us, we, we can manipulate and then get our way. That's change. But do we want it to be real and authentic and from God? That's really, that's really the key, I believe. So I just want to define desperation a little bit more because we can be so, oh, I'm desperate. I'm desperate, you know, and but do we really know? According to the dictionary, it means the loss of hope and surrender to despair, utter loss of hope. So that's really intense. And it's not, it's not a light matter. It's not me just getting upset over some trivial thing. I mean, it's, it's really intense. It's a loss of hope and surrender. Um, other words that mean the same thing are forlornness, a sad and lonely, sad and lonely because of isolation, desolate, devoid of visitors, showing the effects of abandonment, barren, lifeless, devoid of warmth, comfort, or hopes. That's just good to know what that really even means, you know. We need to be really careful because desperation can be clouded by our emotions. We can have desperate emotions, loud, and not really be desperate in our hearts. We just want things our way and we're just throwing a temper tantrum in order to get it so our emotions can seem desperate but our heart can be far from it so that's why again we need to go back and have god expose our hearts and 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 if we're not desperate we well i don't know i don't i guess i don't know what the answer is pray that we become desperate pray that god would move us and open our eyes you know maybe a more accurate way to say it is that our marriage is desperate <clears throat> oftentimes we're not desperate but maybe our marriage is genesis 2:24 says for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh so i mean that's what marriage is like a, a super holy thing and it's like if if we're not in a good place our marriage is the one that's desperate are we one flesh When we're fighting with our husbands, no, we're not. We were created for oneness in marriage by God. And without it, we're we're not going to be happy in our marriage because, you know, we don't have that, that unity that we were created for. So why is being desperate so important? I just want my marriage to be better. Who cares how I get it, right? That's a lot of times how we look at it. But actually, being desperate is the key to this whole thing. If you listen to the last episode, just kingdom ways within marriage and how radical it is. I mean, you have to be crazy. You have to be really crazy and desperate to 
give this a shot. I don't think that, you know, if you do it halfway, if you, if you, if you apply God's ways to your marriage and you're kind of half in it, I, I don't know that it will, I mean, I'm sure you'll see some fruit from it, but I mean, we got to be all in or all out. You know, we got to be hot or cold. How bad do we want a good marriage? Do we want a mediocre marriage? And I'm not even talking about a marriage that's just void of fighting. I mean, you can have a marriage where where we're not fighting with our husbands, but there's still nothing there, you know? I mean, we don't want that. So fighting isn't really, not fighting isn't really the point either. And, you know, desperation, I feel like it always leads us to a crossroads. And it's not just with marriage, it's with everything. Desperation leads us to wanting a change. And, you know, every time we're, we stand at a crossroads, I mean, it's we have a choice. Do we go right or left? Do we go straight? Do we not do anything? I mean, when we're at a crossroads, we have a decision to make. Will I do it my own way and reap more of the same? Or will I do it God's way, a new way, a crazy way in our culture? And, you know, and that way has the power to resurrect what is dead. I mean, are we are we that desperate that we'd give it a shot? One is hope in myself and one is hope in God. I just love Jeremiah 6, 6, 6 16. I, I really love it and I've been memorizing it and I just, it's so good as a mom and just in every way. Um, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. So if we want the good way, we need to ask for the ancient path. And God has given us his ancient path. But the thing is, is like a lot of us have said, we will not walk in it because it's crazy. Our culture doesn't support it. The feminist movement really doesn't support it. We're just bombarded every day by just things that make us fight for our rights and it's not just asking for the ancient path it's walking in it so it's the it's the everyday it's the submitting when i don't understand it's it's submitting and trust submitting to our husbands and trusting that god is working it out and um you know if we're obedient God will hold up his end of the bargain. And, um, you know, our husband's participation really has nothing to do with it. I mean, it makes it easier when our husbands are, you know, nice and doing their part. But actually, you know, just recently, I've just been feeling in my own heart that I don't need my husband's participation. I mean, this has, I mean, my husband's involved, but my allegiance is to God, you know, and it's so hard because, you know, my husband's involved and dying to myself and it's just not easy, but, but we don't need them, their participation in order for this to work in order. I mean, for us to have a good marriage, a choice needs to be made at this crossroads. Will we choose God's ancient path, the good way, or will we choose the one traveled on most by women in our culture today? The path that most women are traveling today is fighting. I mean, I'm not in every home to know, but I am willing to bet that a lot of homes and a lot of marriages have a lot of fighting because this isn't popular. And, and so what's the alternative? To fight for our own way. Matthew seven twenty four through 27 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So, you know, a lot of us, you know, are probably here because we've had broken marriages at one time or another or something's missing. I I don't even have the marriage that I want. I am still learning so much and you know it's like will we rebuild our broken marriage on solid ground on God's truth, his way and do it his way or are we going to just do what we've done and which is basically building it on shifting sand that just continues to be swept away. I know for me uh, when I'm not doing so hot in the 
the department of marriage, I mean, I can, I, I just do the same thing and I get the same results. So it's like, that's insanity, <laughs> you know, to do the same thing over and over and expect something different. We're not going to get anything different. You know, Emerson Engridge, his book, Love and Respect, he calls it the crazy cycle. And it really is. And I think the crazy cycle is when we build on shifting sand and we do it over and over again. And we expect something different. Moving on, I just want to I just wanted to point out some people in scripture who were desperate. The persistent friend in Luke 11, 5 through 10 says, "Then Jesus said to them, "Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, "Friend, lend me 3 loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey, has come to me, and I have no food to offer him." And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened this person was bold and persistent that is what desperation looks like you know bold for us would be starting to implement god's way in our marriage that's a bold that's a bold move i mean your husband's gonna be uh what's the word he's gonna be um not in pre- uh he, he's gonna be surprised that's the word i'm looking for um this is a the God's way is a bold move. Uh, and, and being persistent in that we don't give up even when we fail. Because we will fail. You feel fail every day. I fail every day. And I ask myself, I tell myself, this is just crazy. I can't do it. But I don't know. I've been living this way for so long that it's like I, it's just second nature now. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> it's just kind of, you know, so I just keep going and. And I wonder if that's maybe the key is, you know, we don't need to be perfect, but we can be persistent. So um, another person, and it happens to be a woman, the faith of the Canaanite woman found in Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed at that moment. So she was bold and persistent as well. She was a Canaanite woman, and I don't know too much on the history, but I'm guessing that the Israelites and the Can I don't know. There's something there where they didn't, you know, they weren't, I don't know. I, I don't know. But so that was bold right there, just kind of crossing the culture, the, the culture norms. She was persistent, you know, so people probably knew she was a Canaanite woman and were maybe judging her for it. Uh, I don't know. But another thing is, is she was unoffended. Jesus said some things in there that a lot of us would be offended and we wouldn't continue to pursue him. But she wasn't offended and it's because she was desperate. So that needs to be us. I mean, when God prunes our heart, and he will if we ask him to search us and and try us and um we have the potential to be offended but will i mean we have a choice we're at that crossroads again will we be offended or will we be unoffended so the last the last one i want to talk about was um the woman with the issue of blood mark 5 25 through 34 And a woman who was there had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. 
because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So this woman was desperate. I have a a post on my blog talking a lot about this woman um, and just how desperate we are. I think it's just, this is just an awesome um, picture for us to get in our hearts. Um, She was desperate. Her desperation made her take action. It made her brave and it made her forget social norms as she considered as she was considered unclean. She risked everything because she was disobeying the rules, and her desperation made her try something new. She had spent all she had and yet hadn't met the one true healer before. So that can be, that like is so much like how many of us wives are. Um, myself, have we met the one true healer? It, it says she spent all she had, but clearly she hadn't met, met Jesus before. So are we like this woman? Are you like this woman? Have you spent all you have to try and make your marriage well? Maybe you've spent money on counseling. Maybe it's all of your energy. Many of us have spent the last of our prayers and we don't even pray anymore. Maybe we've run out of faith. Maybe we're beginning to wonder if God exists or, or loves us. Maybe you don't know why you're listening now because you're convinced there's nothing to save since your marriage is already dead. That That is desperation right there. So here's number two. Your marriage is growing worse. Maybe in spite of what you've invested in your marriage, the fighting is only getting worse. That was that was me and my story, and it's found in The Quarreling Wife. Not so much on my blog, but I was trying so hard in my own strength to be a better wife, and I... It was getting worse. I I did not know what to do. It's not that I didn't want a good marriage. I just didn't know how to get it. I'd never seen this. You know, my parents, they're they're Christians, but this is so old. It's new and it's if you don't see it and or if God doesn't open your eyes and teach you, I don't know if there's any way that we can learn this. For a marriage you thought was dead, it is causing so much pain. A lot of us we feel like our marriage is dead, but why is it still causing us so much pain? Maybe you find yourself wishing it was just over. Divorce isn't good, but neither is hurting people while being married either. And that was me. I I had little I had little kids. I had before we moved there were three little kids watching us fight. And I'm not saying we're perfect now and we got four watching us now, so the stakes are even higher. You know, maybe you think that Maybe divorce really is the better alternative to doing that in front of them. Maybe you're desperate. Maybe you're ready to risk your reputation to be made well. You don't care what people think anymore. If there was a guarantee your marriage could be saved, you would do it in a heartbeat. And that is what, that is desperate. If you had an absolute guarantee that your marriage could be made well, just like the woman of the with the issue of blood, you would do it. I mean, that is desperation, and that that's a those are heart questions, issues that we need to really get alone with ourselves and ask God to just open the eyes of our hearts so we can see what's really in there, and then once we see what's in there, <laughs> fix it if it's not right, so that we you know really do have the right motives. Maybe all your friends think you have a solid marriage, but it's a lie. You would risk what they think of you. They might think you're crazy. The woman with the issue of blood, she she was doing something she hadn't done before. She was unclean. She, you know, was probably being judged for it, you know, but she was crazy. She was, like, risking her life to uh, be made well, and maybe that's what you could say we're doing, you know, by applying god's ways to our marriage we're we're going to be crazy to other to other people but we need to not care we need to just go after god's way so i just wanted to you know what do we do if we are desperate Uh, we rest in god's perfect love for us and we just take it one day at a time 
and you're on a journey and and God's not going to give give you more than you can handle. It, it might seem slow, but you might look back a year from now and see that it all went quite fast. You know, that's how it was for me. I felt like, you know, when you're fighting every day in your marriage, it feels like an eternity. But then I looked back and I was like, wow, that, you know, God just kept moving things along and um, it was good. So what do you do if you're not desperate? Well, you do the same thing. Rest in God's perfect love for you. There's no shame. And I mean, no one needs to know what what goes on in your heart. It's only you. It's It's between you and God. And if you really aren't desperate, desperate like this, you know, desperate enough to give God's way a, a real shot, pray that pray that God will get you there. I mean, there's you're not going to hurt God's feelings and then he'll just keep working on you. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Rest in the place that you're in and know that God will draw you unto himself. And that's all I have for you today. I really wanted to put this desperation episode out because of the last episode. <laughs> it was just really crazy. I mean, who would do something that crazy? Well, someone desperate would. We need to be desperate. Marriages need Christ today. Christian marriages need Christ. I hope you're blessed, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Make sure to check out the book that started it all, The Quarreling Wife by Danielle Miller, available on Amazon. Also the blog at www.awomanofvirtue.com for even more resources. God's ways are so old that they are almost new, but they are 100% effective and can change your marriage like nothing else can. Thank you for joining me today, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for new and upcoming content. Also, give us a 5-star rating so we can reach even more wives here at Woman of Virtue. Be blessed today, wife, and may your family be forever changed by the decisions you make this day.